Today we answer questions on how to save money when traveling, which coast to do your farm work on, and the best way to learn to surf. Hi there, it's Adam from Welcome to Travel here. And it's Daryl from Welcome to Travel. This is Ask Travel, where you ask travel questions and we answer them. Absolutely, we do. Um, so don't forget to ask your questions. You can ask in the comments on this video on YouTube or Facebook, and you can also message us on Insta. And yeah, check out our stories. We ask for questions every single week. So I'm going to jump straight into it, Daryl. Good question yes. to you, because I know you are extremely tight. You squeak when you walk. Um, how do you save money when traveling? Who's that from? That is from, that's a good question. That's from Adeline with about 12 ends. So thank you, okay. Adeline. How to save money when traveling? How to save um, money Well, what I like to inform people of when you're coming over and doing a working holiday, people come over with this idea that you're going to like travel like for a week and then work for a week and then travel for a week and work for a week. Whereas in reality, that's not actually how it works or what's not, it's not best for your money really. Because say for example, you're down here in Melbourne and it takes maybe like three or four weeks for you to get a job. During that time, obviously your money is just going to go down and down and down. And say, for example, you only stay in that job for four weeks. It's only going to top that money back up to where it was originally. And then say you move on to Sydney and then you do the same process again. Again, that money is going to go down for about four weeks. And then say you only work for four weeks. It's only going to go back to like the, the amount it was to begin with. So what I would recommend is like doing your work in holiday in chunks. So generally what people do is travel first, depending on your financial situation. Uh, go and do your farm work. Farm work is a great place for you to save money, which we've talked about before, because you don't have um, like, like you don't go out to bars as much and you don't go to like restaurants, like normally what you do in a city and it really helps you save that money. And then from there, go back to the city that you love and work there for around five, six months straight. And that's the best way to save money and traveling. Sweet. Like it. Would you say anything different? Uh, only thing would be then just like day to day stuff. Like just kind of don't, don't live a luxurious life. Like if you're, if you're saving for an amazing dream trip, then just stuff like cook together in the hostel and make your lunches and yeah, sh treat yourself like, and I get a takeaway a week, maybe get a coffee, but don't be like, don't be working and saving in, in a city and eating lunch in the city every single day because you just, your money is gonna, yeah, go quickly. So yeah, just simple things like that, but definitely doing it in chunks is yeah, the best bet. Yeah. Bit of food nice. prep and goon helps. Food prep and goon, not together. Not at the same time. Uh, Adam, I have a question for you. It's on farm work. It's from Molly Dick Dixon. Uh, farm work on the east or west coast? Ooh, good question. Thank you, Molly. East or west coast? So we did our farm work on the west coast. That was mainly because we landed here, had no money, and we were on the west coast. Um, but there's a lot of farming opportunities um, in the southwest of Australia. Um, so in Busselton, Margaret River area, uh, Dunsborough, Denmark, Pemberton, um, there's a lot of farm work there. Um, but aside from that, there's not much more um, apart from the Southwest. So I'd probably say the East Coast will have a lot more opportunities. And obviously you've got all those kind of townships in between the popular towns, um, in between the big cities as well. So. I would say the East Coast because, yeah, you've got basically all the way along from right down in Melbourne, um, you've got places on the Great Ocean Road, then you can go inland to maybe like Mildura, but then as you go back to the coast, you've got plenty of places such as um, Bundaberg, um, you've got Malula Bar on the Sunshine Coast, and then right up north, you've got Tully, Innisfail, Mission Beach, Air, 
Um, you've got Gatton back down south. Yeah, you've got a lot of options basically on the east coast. Um, but at the same time, if you're landing on the west, there's still opportunities. But I probably wouldn't, let's say in Cairns, Sydney or Melbourne, and you saw an opportunity on the west, I'd probably just wait a bit and see if you've exhausted all your opportunities on the east first um, before you make like the big trip over to the west coast. That's probably what I'd say. Yeah, and the best way to get that farm work is by going to those towns and not emailing and ringing up those towns, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So that if you're on the East Coast, that's going to be a lot easier to do. Um, if you hear there's a good season on the West Coast, but that's all you know, it's a long way to go to maybe not get work. Um, so yeah, that's why I think it's going to obviously depend on your situation and where you are as well. So yeah, there's plenty of opportunities around, but a lot more on the East Coast. But that's something we can help you with when you're here as well, for sure. So Daryl, one last question for you. Um, this question is from Siobhan Paul. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, this question is, do you have any tips for learning to surf? Um, E.g. what are the best surf camps, etc.? Good question. And I imagine a few people will be writing uh, on the comments going, why are you asking him? He's not the best surfer. I know I look like I can surf. I can a little bit. Um, but the best uh, tips for learning to surf is, well, say for example, like when people come on our tour, um, with the eight day, we don't just like focus on surfing. We do have an element where you can learn how to surf. It's just like a two hour lesson. And it like, well, you kind of want to see if it's for you and if you want to actually learn how to surf. People sometimes come over with the idea that they are going to hate surfing and then all of a sudden they go into the ocean for like two hours, they catch one or two waves and they go like, this is the best thing ever. I think you might be able to see on like one of our previous videos, a guy called Alex from Germany, who is now like this surfer dude, I'll put a picture, a video of him surfing. He didn't really want to go surfing, but now he's living the life just surfing all around Australia. But once you've had that like little taster, then like going to a surf camp is like unreal and there's two major surf camps in australia there is one just south of sydney uh it's like the ripco like surf camp australia which has unreal facilities and you're just there to learn how to surf and also a similar spot is just south of byron bay is a place called spot x which is kind of it's just like this cool like surfer community and what i really like about surf camps as well it's not compared to like a lesson it's not just jumping in like seeing if you like it and then going out it's you're actually there to learn a new skill but also you are meeting like people who are like-minded as well and from there you like create like these different relationships and friendships and yeah it's always good to be around a campfire somebody with a guitar singing wonderwall yeah that's where you get always it's not like I remember when I first heard the term surf camp and I thought, oh, that's a bit intense. Like, I just want to maybe do a surf lesson for like a couple of hours a day. But that is technically what it is. And then you've got the rest of the time to chill, make friends. You might play volleyball, go to the beach, go on a bike ride, go kayaking. Like, apart from that, you, you're basically just on a holiday, but the surfing is the main part of it. And yeah, you meet so many people. And both Surf Camp Australia and Mojo Spot X are full of, um, full of like-minded people like you and uh, yeah, both great recommendations. So yeah, first recommendation you said then was do a lesson first and if you like it, do a surf camp. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Cool, I wish we could yeah. go for a surf now. Yeah, no. <laughs> It'd be great. Oh, great, good questions. Make me excited and think about traveling again um, and having people on tour and that kind of thing. Um, so thank you very much uh, for your questions, everybody. Um, really good and we love doing these, so please send us more questions, whether it be on Insta or in the comments. Also, we're gonna put a link to a Facebook group down the bottom here. That's for people that are thinking about traveling soon and they want to basically ask questions like this, but they also wanna converse with other travelers about them. Um, so we'll put that link here. And yeah, that's it. Great, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, team. Bye. Bye.